this second video on security best practices, I want to delve deeper into what I meant by update frequently. Now, what happens when um, most attacks are done is that attackers will find a vulnerability or a bug in software um, that they know is installed on a number of systems or on target systems and they will craft a file, a data file, or a particular way of interacting with that application that has the bug in order to take over part of your system or to get some data from your system. And so quite often attackers are relying on bugs in order to get into, into your software. Now if you are the first person that is experiencing that bug or that that bug has been um, used by an attacker, that's called a zero-day exploit. That's one that's not known by the software vendor, um, Microsoft or Apple, and therefore the attacker basically has free reign to do whatever they want with that vulnerability on your system. That is pretty rare. Um, those vulnerabilities are sort of exceptional. It can be very expensive to use, and so they don't tend to be used that much. Usually what happens is that there's a vulnerability out there that's been out there for a little while. The vendor may have even have fixed it, um, but attackers know that people don't update their software all the time. And so they create an attack to go out and try to um, take over systems that haven't been patched. And that's why it's so important to make sure that you not only patch your operating system, but you patch all of the applications that are also used on your computer. And that's basically what I mean by update frequently. Now, most of the apps that are delivered by Microsoft are updated by Microsoft Update or by the Windows Store um, update engine. Um, but it's not a bad idea every once in a while to check and make sure that those things are running properly because some things could block um, the update from happening. Um, so the first update you're going to want to check, you can check that by pressing the window key and then typing update and you'll see the best match is recommending check for updates and that is the option that we want to pick. If you open that up, you'll see that I have a little green arrow saying that everything looks okay on my device. It says it is up to date, and the last time it was checked was a few minutes ago at 7.07. Um, now, if you think there might be another update, you can actually hit check for updates and it will go and do another check and let you know if there are any updates that um, came out since the last time it ran. You can see mine didn't find anything. It now says the last update was 718. Um, I can also hit this view installed update history to see the things that have been updated on my system. So you can see there was a security update for the Adobe Flash Player, a cumulative update for Windows 10. Um, there's also this other updates, which showing that the um, anti-malware tools um, that are installed on Windows were also updated um, yesterday. So all of this is, is good. It's good news for me. Um, now, the other thing you want to check, though, is you also can go into the Windows Store, um, go to this upper tab here, and hit Downloads and Updates. Um, and this will basically show you a history of what's been updated on your system, which applications and when it was updated. So you can see a number of them were updated a few minutes ago online, earlier today, yesterday, and then a few days before. And you can scroll through if you want to see um, what other ones are there. Now, um, you can let the system automatically do this, or you can hit the Get Updates button. It will head out to the internet, see if Microsoft or the vendors that um, you bought your applications through had any other updates, and it will start loading those. You can see I have a message that I'm good to go. All the apps and games from the store have been last updated. And so this is really every application that you've gotten from the store, whether it's written by Microsoft or someone else, um, and that will that will make sure that you have the most recent security updates. Now, there is the possibility, though, that you're, you didn't get the application from the Windows Store. In that case, you either have to rely on that application to have its own mechanism for doing updates. Um, so Apple, Google, um, also Adobe, um, Java, they have agents usually that they'll try to install on your system that will per periodically look for updates and update the system. I've seen cases where they don't work automatically, where you still have to pick an option, um, but they're trying. They're trying to make it so that it works much like the, the Microsoft patch system. Um, but you'll have to take a look at the documentation for those applications if you're using them to figure out how to check the updates or to force an update. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out, though, is that sometimes the updates actually need to be done manually. 
For example, um, there's one application that I sometimes call use called Zlib. It's a compression utility, a little bit like WinZip, um, which is free. You can download it, but when you download one of these types of apps, you have to manually go and check to see if there are any updates. And so the current version that they're on is 1.2.11, but maybe I'm on 1.2.9. Um, I would have to go and get this version, install it over top. And you can actually see in this case, there's even a warning um, that there are bugs in version 1.2.9. And so they say you should immediately replace it with um, 1.2.11. And so in my mind, that's probably means there's a high likelihood that they found something that could be security related. And so this is one of the reasons why you really sort of want to consider um, whether or not you want to install applications from outside the, the Microsoft Store. If you do, you could be responsible for applying the security updates yourself. And if you don't do that, that could allow attackers to use old bugs in software to attack your system. Um, now, the other thing I wanted to, wanted to show you is that you also have the case um, where Microsoft has delivered an anti-malware um, package. It used to be called Windows Defender that has a bunch of signatures of known malicious software. And it's searching for this to see if that software tries to run on your system, if it's installed on your disk, etc. It will block it and potentially even quarantine it. So this is an extra level of protection. And I believe this will work across all applications when it does it. So maybe you have a bad app installed on your computer. Once it's recognized as malware, Windows Defender will, will block and prevent it from running. What you want to do, though, is make sure that Windows Defender is running properly in your system. And the quickest way to do it is if you go to your toolbar here, you can see there's a little shield, and on mine it's showing a green check mark. That means that everything is good on my system. You can see when I look in the details here, it's showing that the last threat scan happened on my system yesterday. The definitions were updated today, and the last health scan was also done today. And so things on my system are, are running as they should be. If you see older dates in here, that might mean your virus protection program isn't being updated as quickly as it should be, and you want to try to do that. If you have any red or yellow errors, you want to read about and click on it and see what it's, what it's warning you about. You can see on mine it's saying no action needed for, for everything in here. Um, here's, here's where you can go to find a little bit more about what it's been doing. Um, you can see the scan history, no threats found, it, it did this many. You can hit this button to do a quick scan, um, which basically goes and checks files that um, are sort of more often threatened. Or you can even hit this advanced scan and do a full scan. So this is something that will go and run on everything on your, your hard disk. And so you might want to do that if you're, if you're worried that your system has been off for a little while and you're about to do something sensitive. Or maybe you browse to a, a link on your website that you're a little worried um, was um, malicious. You can come do a full scan, see if anything was put onto your system. Now, these scans are only as good as the virus signatures that are produced by Microsoft and its partners. Um, you could also get packages from Symantec. Kapersky is another one. Um, but from what I've read and what I've seen, this one does a very good job itself. Um, and so that's something else that, to take a look at. Um, and so that's basically what what I was covering under the update frequently. You want to make sure that all your applications are patched, that your virus program um, is on the most recent version, that it has the most recent signatures. And if you do that, you've, you're really defending yourself from some of the most common types of attacks. Um, and I'm going to leave this video at that point. Um, and the third video will focus on the, the next one on clicking on links. And if you can't avoid clicking on a link, some things you can do to try to limit your, um, your risk of clicking on those links.